first start, we got. I, I, I want to. You know, Mario Saeed doesn't seem to be able to keep an opponent. Uh, you know, at, at Cage Wars. But Leon's story, the, 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 it's all over social media, and it's different things. What is the Cage Warriors' stance on what happened with Leon, and is he going to be coming back? With Mario and Azzy? Uh, no, with with uh, Mar uh, with Mario's first opponent, Leon. Leon. Who oh, Leon Delgado. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think Leon just left it too late to get his safe MMA and his bloods all done and checked in time and get safe MMA clear. Um, very unprofessional of him as a professional athlete to leave it that late. Um, but I believe he was also offered to um, go to a, a private clinic and have it turned on in 24 hours and he refused. So that's his decision. He's, he's the professional athlete. He had a spot in Cage Warriors. So whether we get him back or not, I don't know. Maybe we'll touch base with um, his coaches and him at this week and see what went wrong and why he, he, he acted the way he did. Also, you, you had a couple of issues of weight. Again, but this time not nearly as many as when we came to Wells before. The 60%. Is that going to affect Jack Marshman's opportunities because this fight, certainly on social media, was considered perhaps an eliminator for Hermison? Uh, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to speak to Jack and his camp this week. Um, that fight was an eliminator to, to see who Jack gets next. There's, there's four big middleweights in, in, in the race uh, for Jack. But my only problem with Jack Marshman is he's only ever made 186. He's used the pound allowance every time. I believe, I, I'm pretty sure he's used the pound allowance every time. And on this time round, he missed weight by two. If he's fighting for a world title, there is no allowance. It's 185 and that's it. So I've got to talk to them. Um, he, he's put himself in the number one contention spot, but I've got to have a chat with him and his coach and his camp uh, about this uh, making weight because if he can't make 185 and he's using the pound allowance every time he fights, then we've got uh, some issues to talk about. Yeah. With Brett, Brett getting the next shot at Tony? Um, those other guys there, we'll, we'll, we'll go through that. Uh, Brett, uh, for the record, was offered this shot um, with Corey. Uh, I don't know what uh, the Brett Johns camp are thinking, what they want to do. Maybe they're sitting out waiting for another organization to pick him up in the States. I believe he's got a new manager in the States. I've heard nothing from them. They were offered this position. They took over four weeks to come back to me to confirm the position, which is why I was given to Tony Taro. It's not a case of anything to do with him missing weight on his last fight. It was a case of they had four weeks, they had a contract, they didn't get it back, it was given to Tony Taro. End of. And now Tony's obviously taken full advantage of that. You know, the first thing he said was, I want Cage Warriors to come to Finland. Maybe not this year, but 2015, if he's still your champ, is, that, is this a good way into another country for you? Why not? You know, we, 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 we'll go where the champions that we have are based, where the fighters that we have are based. We're, you know, we're a, we're a global organization. We have no problem going to other countries, other cities. So we'll see where it goes. We'll talk to Tony. Uh, we'll have, also have a look at what Bantams are next in line for a shot at him. See when he's ready to defend, and we'll take it from there this week. We'll have chats and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, 69, you mentioned about going to, into the States. Has, uh, has anything happened with that since? It's still a work in progress. It's not as easy as um, just marching in there. Like I said in my uh, last press scrum, I've got to go to the States and speak to the people I'm talking with over there. But it's all plans for yes. Um, there's only one of me, and I've got to get everywhere to make all this happen. So we're still working on it. It will happen. I was hoping before the end of the year, but it may be early next year. Yeah. How many Cage Warriors shows have we got to look forward to for the rest of this year? Is it a minimum of eight, or are there a couple more that haven't been announced yet? There's a, there's, I think there's four more that have not been announced. Yeah. So I'm pushing to try and get them out as quick as I can. Birmingham be one of those shows? Birmingham's not going to happen this other Christmas. Is that because Tom Breeze is now going to be making his debut at the Copper Box, and it just doesn't make sense to put a, you know, have an event in Birmingham when you're arguably your marquee Midlands guy is going to be on a November 15th card? Did that uh, enter into it at all? Nothing to do with it. It's more a case of dates and availability at arenas. That's that's what put a hold to it. Yeah. Okay, and um, um, as far as the uh, Birmingham again, you've got Tim Wilde, who was supposed to be uh, fighting today. How um, disappointing was it to have that fight scrap? Uh, it's, it's always disappointing when you, when you put on good fights, you're looking forward to them, and someone gets injured, unfortunately. It's just the nature of the game we're in. These guys, these guys are training quite heavily. Um, some of them train harder than the actual fight and they spar in the gyms harder than the actual fight they get stuck into. So to lose Tim Wilde, who I was looking forward to seeing back in again, was disappointing, but we'll get him in as soon as we can. And there's a spot there from as soon as he's ready.
you know, the Tom Brees fight is not that far away because he's from our neck of the woods and, and, and we followed Tom's career. How, how soon before an opponent can be publicly announced? Can that be announced now? Do you know it? Can you put it out for us or is it a little too early? Uh, the opponent is done. The contracts have been sent out. They'll be back Monday or Tuesday. It'll be announced this week. Yeah. So you made some drastic changes to the, the bonus, well, the fines for fighters cut missing weight following the Liverpool show. Have you sort of found that, given now probably only one person has missed weight officially, you find that as a success? Be it's beautiful, isn't it? You know, but, but, no, 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 it, it's, it's, it's worked perfectly. You know, um, the, when these guys sign a contract, they're signing to make weight or whatever's in that contract. They're fighting a the middleweight, 185, that's what they're signing to do. I'm also signing that contract that I'm committing to pay you X amount for that. So when they come in and miss weight, it's the equivalent to me saying, well, I'm not going to pay you what, you, what, I, what I signed on your contract for that. So the only way to combat that is to deduct them. And, but I'll say this again, I've said it a lot since we brought it in. That money goes to their opponent. 40% of it goes to their opponent and 20% of that goes to a charity. So it's a win-win for everyone, but it's bad news for the guy who didn't make weight, you know? And um, with regards to that, there was two guys that missed weight in the same fight and that then became a catch weight this time. Would they still deduct it or because they then agreed at the They agreed weight? to a catch, so that's their business. Yeah, as long as they both agree, camps agreed, then it's not classed that they missed weight because they've agreed to the catch. If one didn't, then yeah, they missed weight. Yeah. Kate Jackson comes in today for her Cage Warriors debut, and you've got another you got another female athlete that, quite frankly, it looks the business all-round skill set. Is she is is it going to be possible to to get fights for her in the next in the next few months? Bearing in mind that that weight division again is 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 a little bit small at the moment. We'll look at that this week. I'll sit down with Ian. We'll go through what opponents are there. Um, after every show, we'll sit down and have a debrief. Who's picked up injuries? Who's going to be suspended with safe MMA? Um, some guys may have got 28-day suspensions. They're not going to be back in. They could be back in training, but not full contact training. Uh, some of them might not be available the rest of the year. So it's a case of the week after each show, we'll sit down, go through who's, if not already contracted to fight, who's up next, who from this show rides on a wave of a win that we can get back in again that's not injured. So it takes an afternoon of sitting down discussing where we're at. It's a testament to Ian Dean and perhaps even yourself that you can lose a fight like Nicholas Dalby and Gail Grimald off the top of a card and still put on, a, essentially, you wouldn't have missed that fight if you didn't know it was here tonight. Is that down again, is that down to Ian Dean or is that down to the whole team? Uh, Ian's one of the top talents in Europe. He's got a lot of knowledge on what's going on in the game. We try to, every show we do, we try to match two fights on every card that are capable of main event status. As a contingency plan, should we lose the main event, the next one gets bumped up to main event. Having two world title fights on one um, event, we lose one, we still got another one. So we'll always look to match the co-main and the main as if they could both be a main event. As a, it's an insurance policy because this is MMA. People get injured and we've experienced that this weekend. So we'll always do that in every show. So does that mean that we'll always see two title fights now or will it not necessarily be... Not necessarily be two title, yeah. It won't necessarily be two title fights, but there will always be two fights in the main card that are more than capable of holding a main event status. Yeah. Is there any news on the featherweight title? There were a lot of talk about that after the recent shows. Has there been any movement on what's happening there? Yeah, we, we discussed that actually uh, Thursday this week. We've, um, we've got two guys that we're going to speak to Tuesday uh, who we're going to put up for that featherweight belt. We're just going to talk to them. Um, a, if that they're available, and B, where do we put that uh, Getting on? the fourth guy for the tournament within the roster didn't really make a lot of sense. So we're going to go with uh, the two best guys in the division that we think are worthy of fighting for that belt. It'll happen this year. Will yeah. there be a revisit of Super Saturday next year? Yes, of course, 100%. Yeah. You want to watch over the Copper Box, so that might take, super, uh, take over uh, Super Saturday. And um, Chris Edwards lost his uh, fifth straight fight today. Is uh, there any chance we'll sit and not see him again on Cage Warriors? No, you'll always see Chris in Cage Warriors. You know, he, he, he's, um, he's one of these guys, win, lose, or draw, you're always going to have an entertaining fight. He'll always come out and leave it in the cage. So, no, I've got a lot of respect for Chris, and he'll always have a place in Cage Warriors with me. So we spoke to Jordan desperate before the fight, and he said the same. He said there's a couple of split decisions, but his record could literally be 11 4 instead of the first man for. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of guys in MMA, you know, who their records may not be great or they may be even, yeah, but yeah. every fight they're in is entertaining. You can't knock them or take opportunities away from them just because they've got an even record. If you look back at all the fights, every one of them is probably entertaining. So Chris has got a place in Cage Warriors as long as he wants it. And what about Amanda Kelly? What do you 
what's next? What's the team next for her? Uh, we'll have to talk with Amanda and her team as well. Uh, she seems to just get caught. Um, you know, a 31 and one world Muay Thai champion steps in the cage and just seems to just get caught with the grappling, with the ground game. We'll have a chat with the camp this week and see see what they want to do and where she wants to go. When Gavin Grimald pulled out, was there any was there any chance at all that you were going to even begin to look for a replacement or for a fight of that importance? It was just a no go whatsoever. We actually, uh, Gail contacted me on Tuesday um, and said to me, his back has flared up. He's been to the doctor. He's had a, an anti-inflammatory injection, and he'll go back and see the doctor on the Wednesday. Uh, I said, I need to speak to you by 4 o'clock Wednesday. When I got off the, the conversation with Gail, I asked Ian to give me options of who's available within the roster. Get anyone who you think is available right now, and contact me once you're finished. Well, who's available, who wants the shot, who wants the opportunity, who can turn up Saturday in Wales. There was one or two names, there was two names came back. Both wanted it. I won't say them. Both, both names came back. They both wanted it. Uh, I had picked one of them. We were ready to push the button on it. Then Gail contacted and said, I'm good. I'm good to go. So we, we contacted the two guys and said, look, we're okay. Gail is in. Uh, but thank you. The opportunity was there for you. Uh, Gail got off the flight, booked into the hotel, woke up the morning of weighing, told Ian his back is flared up. He thinks it was from the flight. Uh, he's been limping around the, the hotel, so Gail is a genuine guy, yeah. you know. Um, he would have been pretty gutted to lose that opportunity to fight for the belt. But at the same time, that's the second time he's pulled out of this fight with the same, with Dalby. Uh, they were supposed to fight in March for the belt with the same injury. So it's, it's unfair on uh, Nicholas if we were to put him back into that situation again and the same thing happened with Gail. So I think Gail needs to have a couple of fights and show that his body can actually stay yeah. together during camp and then maybe look at the belt again. Yeah. Is there any doubt um, about Bahari as the next title contender? Was there going to be anybody else in the picture? For Nicholas uh, Dalby? Uh, yeah, that's also done and dusted. And it's, it's, I've made public knowledge he's fighting Monster yeah, Bahari um, in a couple box. Was there anybody else that was in line other than Bahari or was he the, the standout guy? Uh, Danny Roberts was in line. Uh, he, Danny, Danny Roberts was the number one uh, contender for Nicholas, but Danny's got a few injuries he's nursing. Uh, I believe he's having a... a some rehab work done in the next two weeks. He's not been training. The fight was offered to him. He's not been training. He's having rehab work done in two weeks. He only goes back training, I think, uh, the beginning or second week of October, which is no time for him to get involved in a five rounder with Nicholas Dowdy. Yeah. So the next guy in line that is coming off a hot streak is Monson Bahari. We called Monson up after Danny, uh, we found out Danny wasn't available, and Monson just said yes. They, they, we didn't finish the question, he just said yes. So he's in, that's going to happen at the Olympic Village um, at the Copper Box, November 15th, and that's the main event, yeah. What are your highlights from tonight? You know, as a fan, not the promoter, you know, sitting, okay, who, who stood out to you? I'm not asking for award bonuses, but what, what, what stood out for you tonight? Um, the uh, Rayburn fight with Damien, that was absolutely crazy. The Lu Long, Steve Dinsdale fight, another crazy fight. And then Marshman and um, Shea Mills, three crazy fights. I'd like to give them all fight at night bonuses, but... You heard it here first. <laughs> um, Jack was talking to us about uh, asking you for the uh, knockout of the night bonus and then maybe even the fight of the night bonus, but with yeah. missing weight, has he lost uh, those chances? No, uh, yeah, it, I, I've got to... In, in I've got to put this out there again. I said it a few times. Knockout of the night is one punch, you land, you connect, he's out. It's not you've knocked him to the floor and then ran in, held him down and finished him from there. So I don't believe there's a knockout of the night tonight where it was a one punch clean knockout. Yep. Um, it's not a TKO of the night, it's a knockout of the night. So I don't believe that will go out tonight. No. Huh? Up kick of the night. Uh, we, got, well, we got asked. I mean, I don't know if you've seen... I don't know if you've seen the replay or thing, but you, it, it doesn't paint a pretty picture for one of the fighters, that replay. It looks like he got kicked, like he looked at the referee, and like he lied down. And I, I, I hate saying that because I love the guy as a fighter, but that's what it looks like. What's your? Do you guys have to take a look at Do you guys even care? The decision is a decision, and we move forward. Uh, I don't really care about what's happened. I do care, but I don't. I, I bring referees in. I pay them. What they call, they call. I don't get involved in... Um, decisions after. I don't go run up to referees or judges and go, what the F was that or what were you thinking? They get paid to come in and do a job. That's their profession. They make the decisions. They're in charge. End of. 
Would it be something you look at though? Do, you know, are you going to take a look and, and, and decide whether or not? Mm -hmm. Or I'll have a look at it. I'm very intrigued to see it myself back, just like everybody else yeah. is, but I reserve my opinions to myself. I'm not going to get involved in that. And there'll be no sharing that whatsoever? Sorry, no. guys. Right. So, so, um, it, it, it'll, like I said, it, it was a, a Facebook prelim, so they'll all be on our um, YouTube channel tomorrow yeah. for everyone to watch. I'm sure there'll be a lot of debate so. uh, on social media about that fight. So I'll watch it, but I'll keep my opinions to myself. You know, you, Here's what it is. Is there a rematch a possibility for that fight? I have no problem putting that rematch on if they want it. Yeah. Right, thanks, guys. Okay. thanks for your time, Graham. Thank you, boys. Thanks, thanks for coming. Go on, fish.